Welcome back to our little series here on Conva.js, and in this video, we're going to finish up talking about performance. Now, if you're watching this video, you probably watched the previous two videos where we talked about caching your shapes, and that's huge, right? And also using or utilizing multiple layers and keeping static stuff on one layer that doesn't get drawn on every frame and keeping your animated stuff on, an, on a different layer uh, that does get drawn. And those two taken together, caching your shapes and uh, uh, use, utilizing multiple layers are 80-85% of the performance game. Bottom line, you do those two things, you'll never have a problem. Having said that, there are a couple of other things we can do to further raise our or optimize our performance. But whatever you do from this point forward, make sure that you're caching your shapes religiously and you're managing your layers intelligently. Those two come first. Okay, so let's see what else we can do. Three things I want to cover in this video. Set listening to false. Uh, here we have same, pretty much the same setup we had last time. We have our stage, of course. We have two layers here, right? Static layer and anim layer. And down here in a loop here, we're creating 20 stars and adding them to our layer. Turns out that for every, and, and as before, of course, these stars are all draggable and they're also clickable like this. And you can see down in the console, we get a little clicked message. Okay, great. Uh, it turns out that Conva keeps sort of an internal array of all of the shapes that we add to our project. And anytime the user moves the mouse or clicks on anything, Conva runs through that whole array and checks whether uh, the shape has been has been clicked on or otherwise an event has acted on it. So if you want to uh, remove the shape from consideration, for example, the stars here, we can set the listening property to false. And if we save and refresh our page here, we see that these are no longer draggable. Technically speaking, they are draggable, of course. The draggable property, after all, is set to true. But by setting the listening property to false, Conva's not even checking for these stars to see whether they're uh, being clicked on or moused over or whatever it is. This can be huge if you have a big complex animation with a lot of shapes that the user never has to interact with directly. Now, of course, even if we set the listening to false, we can still change them and edit them programmatically. That's no problem, but the user can no longer uh, work with them directly. Okay, I'm going to comment that, or not comment that out, remove that rather. Okay, and of course now they are all draggable again. Okay, great. Turns out that we can do the same thing for a layer. If we have a layer like this, okay, uh, that we know we'll never have to, or the user will never have to interact with directly, again we can set the, less, the, the listening property to false on the layer, and again doesn't work here. Okay, clicking again doesn't work. So before when we said that when you create a new layer, it doesn't require any, you know, uh, parameters or an object or anything. Well, that's not to say that we can't add one. We can here. We can set the listening property to false. And by the same token, we could even, if you want to, set the listening property to false for the entire stage, and we get the same thing. Now, here's a here's an entire project that the user can never interact with directly. Okay, I don't know how useful that is, but anyway. Okay, so listening, setting listening to false is a big one too. Another uh, difference here, uh, another uh, optimization we can make is is, optimi is uh, setting using batch draw instead of draw. Notice that in this case here, we're drawing the static layer or batch drawing the static layer inside of this for loop. Now clearly, if this were just a straight vanilla draw, this would be inefficient, wouldn't it? Because we'd be trying to draw the layer 20 times in the tiniest fraction of a second. So batch draw does just that. Same thing as draw, but sort of throttles it back and makes sure that it is only called once per frame. So if you're in a situation where you think that you may be, where you're using, you know, layer name dot draw, right? And you may be calling that more than once a frame more often than it could possibly redraw itself, then batch draw is your friend. Now in my own code, I just always use batch draw because I don't want to think about it. Okay, uh, so yeah, but use batch draw instead of draw, particularly where you think it may be called more than once a frame. And finally, the last one I want to talk about here uh, in this video, last optimization, is returning false from an animation function. So here now in this video, or not, excuse me, not video, in this application, we don't actually have any animations, but let's come down here to the bottom and I have sort of a dummy animation here. 
okay? An at conv animation we saw a couple videos ago. It calls this function name and we're passing in the static layer, okay? We've seen this all before, right? So it turns out that if you have a frame, or excuse me, an animation, and if you go through all of the, you know, the calculations that you'd ordinarily do, calculating x and y and whatever, cal whatever, what, whatever other properties may be changing, if, lo and behold, on this particular frame there are no changes for whatever reason, you can return false, and this avoids redrawing the layer. Returning false does not stop the function, it's not like stopping the animation, it just exit early, exits early from this function, and and uh, that increases efficiency. Okay, great. And it doesn't, it avoids redrawing the layer. Imagine, for example, we had a pendulum. This is much of a pendulum, but, and you're swinging on and off the, the canvas here, okay? This is a good example because when it's off, you don't want to stop the animation per se, but there's no point in redrawing the, the layer. Okay, so these three things taken together, my friends, set listening to false, one on any shape or even layer or even stage, where it's appropriate, use batch draw instead of draw, almost universally I would say, and return false from animation functions when there's no change to the layer. Okay, thank you very much, and see you in the next video in which we'll talk about groupings of shapes.